Welcome everybody to Majesty Mike. I don't think we even need an intro. I'm so excited to have you here, Nancy. We have Nancy from Love is Blind, season three. Welcome to the pod, Nancy. Thank you all so much for having me. I'm so excited. Such a cute place. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have been just, I mean, I fucking love the show, first of all. Absolutely love it. Um, season one, I was hooked. I guess that's when Corona started. So, you know, everybody got hooked on it. But then when your season came out, I was just so attached to it. And I flew back from California today and I was telling Amira, I was re-watching it all, like skimming through it. And I cried a bit just be <laughs> <laughs> through your through your bits and, and, and parts of the whole season because it's just a fucking shit show if you ask me, but. We there's love you so, so much. Yeah, there's so much to talk about. I'm like, like your biggest fan. Oh my <laughs> Collect God, your you. thoughts. <laughs> Collect your thoughts. I know. Um, thank you. So I guess to start out, yeah. what was like a typical day in your life prior to doing the show? Yeah, no, what's so funny is like when I applied for the show, I was in such a good place. Professionally, I had left my full-time job and I had gone full-time real estate. Uh, when I was actually going through the casting process, it was about a six-month casting process. Oh my God. So I was in such a good place professionally. I had just left my nine-to-five to work full-time in real estate. Mm -hmm. and um, And I think for me, like... I measure my success off of my career because I did go to school. I did get a career in speech and language pathology. I got into a lot of debt, you know, um, and I think a lot of my 20s was understanding my finances and really getting to a place where I felt confident enough with my finances, my career. And then also I was single as a Pringle. <laughs> you know, I had I had not really... I hadn't gone much on the dating apps um, at that time. I was just kind of dating people that I met, like, organically. Right. And so, um, so yeah, honestly, overall, I felt like a um, – I felt strong. I felt confident as an individual when I applied for the show. And I think really – I would even say the casting process of Love is Blind is very therapeutic. The mm -hmm. questions that they ask you over and over with this producer, with this recruiter, with, okay, now write this, like, essay of, like, where have you been in life? What are your top qualities? I mean, you really have to sit there and think, like, what, what are three things that my friends would say about me? Or, like, you know, so it really kind of puts you in this headspace that, like, are you actually ready for Love is Blind? Are you actually ready for an opportunity like this, a social experiment? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I truly enjoyed the casting process. Even if I hadn't gotten selected, I feel like I would have learned a lot about myself. Kind of like putting your life on a resume is right. what it felt like. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. But what, I know you said you were single as a Pringle, but what made you want to apply for the show? So, it's so funny. I loved season one. Mm -hmm. Like, that was such a neat idea of what a twist on finding love. And I think for me, I the dates that I had gone on the last two years before I got on Love is Blind, a lot of the times what I found is, like, even dating successful men, they just weren't in a place where they were ready to settle down mm. or they weren't in a place where their mindset was, oh, let me appreciate you for your value, for your worth, like who you are. And, and I think for me, it was more of the experiences that I was having. I just kind of kept running into dates that weren't ready to commit to a relationship. So, you know, go on a couple dates or three or four dates and then realize, you know what, like this is not for me or vice versa, right? Um, so I think for me, it was experiencing that, just like the constant, um, the same narrative from guys that just weren't ready. And I'm, I was dating like 35 year olds, 36 year olds, like I didn't have an age, well, I did have an age limit. Ooh. Like I wouldn't have dated a 25 year old <laughs> for sure. Like, oh my God, um, thinking about that. Like, cringe <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I think, I think for me, it was just being in a place where I was like, you know what, if I'm going to find love, let it be through a social experiment, you know? Um, and then even on top of that, I think what made Love is Blind so unique is the concept that you don't get to see what I look like. Physically, you cannot see my body. You cannot see my physical assets. And even that, I took it a little farther by not really discussing my finances in the pods. Um, because I didn't want to be judged either for like, oh my gosh, you know, she's a successful real estate person and she must have all this money. So I, I really kept that information on the DL until I actually got engaged. So do they ask all that? Like all the guys, like, are they getting real personal with all like the financial questions and everything? Like some people did. There's no rules and regulations in the pods. You can literally have whatever conversation. Okay. So actually 
there were conversations that were very intimate in the pods with other couples that I know of. And, um, and yeah, like they went all in to talk about very, very deep, intimate things. And I think for me, like I, I remember going into it. My, some of my best friends had gave me a list of all these questions on day one, ask these questions on day two, ask these questions. And I had this list like written on, on a piece of paper the day that I walked into the lounge before going in the pods, I crumbled up that piece of paper and I was like, no, I'm just going to go in with my heart, like with my mind, like whatever question comes to mind, that's how I'm going to go into the pods. And what was so neat is that that really kind of opened up my mind instead of being stuck on, okay, on day one, I need to find out these things. On day Mm. two, I need to find out these things. There was no structure. Um, And I think for me, it helped me to just be more organic. And there were questions that I asked SK as someone I was dating that I didn't ask Bartiz or okay. vice versa. Um, and I don't know if that was the best strategy, but it got me a fiance <laughs> that I actually loved. So I feel like it worked for me to do it that way. Gotcha. So interesting. So are you back in the dating world? You said like, are you back? <laughs> are you getting on the apps? And before that, are you even, were you on the apps before? Like, how did you meet these 35 year olds? How, was it just in person? Cause fucking that's hard today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, A combination of the two. So I remember I got on the apps for like three days and I pulled like two or three guys from like the chats and I was like, okay, like I'm out, like Mm -hmm. I'm done, like this is That's smart. And I was just like, let me just focus on these three like quality type of guys. Um, And and then like other people that I've met was just like in person, like at a bar somewhere. Um, But yeah, so am I dating now? Absolutely. I'm totally open to it. Actually, it's so fun. I'm doing this uh, new app that I've, recently got on it's called chispa and what's so neat about it is that it's actually based off of putting latino couples like together like latino singles together and it's just such a unique feeling i went on a date last night (gasps) where did you go (laughs) yeah where did you go oh my god i'll tell you all about it so good um but yes i went on a date and there was something so like pulling on my heartstrings. I don't know if you guys remember one of the scenes where I heard Bartiz speak Spanish for the first time mm-hmm. and I was like, hablas español. Like there's something so special to my heart. Like when I hear someone speak Spanish or, um, you know, it just, I just think it just reminds me of how much I love my culture and uh, my language. And so uh, even with that said, so on this app, went on a date and he asked me, because on my pro- dating profile, I said, a big red flag is if you um, if you make a low effort date, it's not going to happen. Like, put some effort into our first date. And so he DM'd me in the messages, and he was like, so, so what is a low effort date? And I'm like, sir, okay, I'm going to tell you what a high <laughs> effort date is. And so he actually bought us concert tickets to like this Latino, we were actually right around this area, House of Blues. Nice. Um, We went on a date there and we kind of got lost on the way there. So we had like an hour where we were just talking and it was nice because like, can you really talk at a concert, you know? Um, But then we hung out afterwards, uh, again, just kind of keeping conversation. And it was just so neat to really have that similar cultural background. His background is Mexican, so mom and dad, and they're both immigrants. So there was just something very peaceful I guess or very familiar. comfortable familiar yeah. there you go yeah. so I'm excited to keep you know working on that app and just fi- filtering out and seeing like if the date is a coffee date I'm sorry not going yeah if you're trying to go on a walk on their first date I can go walk by myself <laughs> like no thank you <laughs> I, I just need it. to I need to see the effort I need someone to be direct come at me correct and like then we can see where it goes you know how has like Instagram changed for you? Like how like you must get a million DMs a day. Yeah, uh, the DMs are full. They are so especially full. especially from the men. Oh yeah, my gosh! Men, yeah. and I get the sweetest like messages and voice memos too. And Aww. and sometimes like if I do have a little downtime, I so okay. I have my regular general inbox and I have like a primary inbox. Then I have this other inbox and then there's an other, other inbox. Oh my God. There's like four <laughs> inboxes. So sometimes if I'm a little bored or I can't sleep, I go to the other, 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 and, or like the fourth inbox. And it is so neat to find some of the messages, the marriage proposals I've gotten. Oh uh, people are like, marry me, I'll take you. And I'm like, y'all, I'm not up for grabs. Yeah. Like, I felt like, you know, you're going to. So it's it's so sweet. It's 
honestly, I have no complaints. Overall, so positive. So many women have reached out on different topics. And I think for me, social media before was very intimate. And mm. like I had 800 followers. They were family, high school friends, people I've met in college. Um, I think what is so neat now is that I have a platform where other Latinas are relating to me or there are other people that want to get into real estate that are like, hey, like teach me your ways. So, so much more of my life is out there now. And I think for me, I, it's such a blessing to have this opportunity to be able to talk about those things and normalize finance, financial conversations, normalize conversations about investing um, and just really taking that opportunity to use my platform for the right reasons. I really think you do. One of the things Chris and I were talking about before we had you on was you were saying that not only are you so proud of your background and you represent that on your Instagram page, but your entire page is just full of, you know, inspiration, motivation. Like it's just like a positive place. And it would have been so easy to, you know, go the whole like thirst trap route or whatever, you know, from spinning off from Love is Blind. But no, your I think your page is like a really happy little spot on Instagram. Oh my God. Thank you. And honestly, the way I see it is like this, like if, if my nieces were to come on, they're still really young, but mm -hmm. like they were to come on my Instagram, I want them to be proud of like who their aunt is, you know? And so I think for me, it's like my dad obviously does not have Instagram. <laughs> He's very like, late what about daddy. your mom? Oh my God. My mom I has Instagram. I love your mom. I love your mom too. She is a mess. <laughs> I was like, mom, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't post that. She's so going in the comments. She, yeah. <laughs> she, we had to have a conversation about that. Cause I was like, mom, like, you know, like remember, like we played nice you know and so she's she's literally ready to like you know buck up and stuff um but there was something she said um in the last up in the new episodes released and she was just like i'll tear some shit up for some, like for my family like i will tear it up you know and and it's true because like her love runs so deep and it's nothing to be afraid of as long as you come correct i think it's like you should want to be embraced by my mom. Mm -hmm. You should want to be loved by her. And I think that when you feel that love and you deserve that love, you won't be intimidated by it. You'll be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, this is like my friend or this is like my neighbor. Um, yep. At least that's how she's known in our hometown. She is like the queen of it all, like in our little hometown. Everybody knows her. She helps out so many people. Love my mom. <laughs> oh, I love her too. But we have to watch her Instagram. Oh yeah, my like, gosh. We're going to do Keep that. her in like the boundaries. <laughs> is, does she have an open profile? She does. <gasps> yeah, oh my gosh. It's Mama Bear Eddie. Oh okay, my god, We're going to have that up on the screen right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing that I really loved seeing was your family. Like how supportive you guys are, especially your brother. Like it was, it was just so good to see. So I really do love your family for that. And you know what? Part of the experiment, looking back at it, right? Because it's one experience to live it mm -hmm. and then to watch it over and over again in different, you know, spectrums. Like, for example, the first time I watched it, we were in a hotel room. They, they uh, what they call, uh, like, quarantined us, put us in a hotel room, gave us an iPad, and made us watch all the episodes right before reunion. Oh. And so I'm sitting there, like, processing, and we only had so many hours to watch it. So I'm sitting there processing the entire season, and I'm, I'm re-watching scenes. And I'm like, okay, now I'm watching my mom meeting Bartiz for the first time, but I'm, I'm watching the way my mom is reacting versus how I'm reacting. And now I'm watching Bartiz's interviews. So, like, there was so much to process right before reunion. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I say that because I went into the pods. You have no phones. You have no family. You make decisions on your own. You either make a connection or you don't so I think for me it was very it was very much so on my shoulders of like what are you gonna do in this experiment like what are you what is it that you're feeling and you make a decision do you pick Andrew do you pick Bartiz and so once we came into the real world and we brought our families in mm -hmm. I still wanted to hold on to like but I got this you know like I, I chose him and so like I'm gonna stand by it like my man um at the time <laughs> and uh and just really carry that um, that responsibility that I chose him and like, this is what I want to do. And this is my relationship. So, um, so when my family got involved, I just feel like they were able to kind of see outside of what was actually happening. And I appreciate them so much because my mom was asking the right questions. My brother was asking the right questions. I didn't know they had that conversation until I saw it on the show. Oh, like wow. when they went outside and yeah, talked, yeah, like, yeah. I didn't get any of those details um, of like how intimidating like my brother was to be like, 
bro, that's a bland answer. Like, you know, which is true. Like, he made my brother made so much sense. Like, I know I'm a people person, and I know that I can like, m- like make good relationships, professional friendships. Um, so I think it was very, very, very uh, smart of my brother to just be like, but wait, like, she does this to everyone. So like, why is it so special for you? Yeah. Gotcha. So can we talk a bit about? the show in terms of behind the scenes like do it. what happens when <laughs> those cameras go off like where do you stay do you talk to any I, obviously it's just the girls on your side yeah so what happens when the cameras go off and is there anything you can tell us about what happened when the cameras were off <laughs> yeah um it's so funny so there's different phases right phase one is the pods mm-hmm. and we are in LA um when the cameras go off we do get what they call sequestered. So we have no contact with the world and we get put in vans. And then sometimes <laughs> yeah, like from the vans, white vans, we go literally white vans. No. Like, and, and, and so depending on how late, cause so the day of the like pod dating is so exhausting. It's a long day. I mean, you're talking day dates and then night dates. Sometimes our night dates would go till three or four in the morning. Oh, like wow. long nights of just like dating our people to see, you know, your job is, to, are you going to fall in love? Can you fall in love? Or are you out? Right. Um, and so after the, after we left the pods, you know, we, we go back to our hotel. We have to wake up at like 7 a.m. to have breakfast. Jeez. Usually COVID testing would be involved. And then, so it's like back all over again, right? Like, okay, can you fall in love? Are you still in love? Are you getting feelings? Um, now when we got back to Dallas, there were nights where, so we in Dallas, we lived in an apartment complex okay. and we all had our separate, all the couples, the five couples had their separate apartments. I don't think none of us were on the same floor, but we were all in the same building. Mm -hmm. so like there were nights where we're like hey pool night like bring dinner and like we're gonna like hang out by the pool and that's where a lot of the back like conversations were happening like we're complaining about oh my god we're not having enough sex or like (laughs) oh my god like you know he did this to me like we're just like you know venting to each other all the girls and then sometimes there were nights where we'd go to the pool and it would just be um there's actually um I'll, i'll tell you this and there was one time we went to like the you know, like a loungy area that apartments have where Mm -hmm. they just have like a a kitchen for everyone to use, like communal kitchen, communal space, lounge. And we were, we stayed up late. We uh, were playing pool and it was me, Cole and Bartiz. And uh, we were just sitting there talking for like an hour after everybody had already gone to bed. And so even just moments like that where like we got to have more one-on-one moments with other couples. I think SK was there pretty long and then he might have gone like back. But um, yeah, so there was, we were literally trying to see if this was going to work for us. Some of my favorite dates with Bartise were off camera. Um, you know, a day that we're not filming, a day that we're like, hey, we're going to go to work. And then after work, like, be ready by this time because we're going to go to the mall totally. and get an outfit and, like, go to dinner and go dancing. Um, so, yeah, we, we really, at least in my relationship, we really did try to test out, like, without cameras, can we actually still have the same chemistry? Like, can we still have um, a relationship that's sustainable? And um, for me, it was. It, it felt so normal to be dating in the real world off camera. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I definitely got that sense for sure um, from at least what I saw. Yeah. But that's good to hear that even off camera, it felt like that and even more so. Yeah. That's definitely. awesome. So how long is actual filming of the show like is it a month long of like from a to b or like what is that it's about 13 weeks 13 weeks 13 weeks yeah from the and that's obviously if you make it through from the very beginning to the end um so my wedding day was like july 1st my last day of filming was july 2nd okay and we started back in like beginning of may so yeah it was um it was about 13 weeks i believe wow 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 i always wanted to know about the wedding it seems like you guys don't have much say. Like it's this, they pick the place, all of that kind of stuff. Um, they pick the place, they pick the venue. However, we do have say on like design, color, like oh, okay. aesthetics. Like we actually got to pick our wedding invitation. We were like, hey, we want these colors. I think our colors were uh, gold, black, and white. Nice. And so we actually have like an invitation that was made by our producers um, to send to our family with all the details and all that. Um, so yeah, there was some say, honestly, if that's how easy it is to have a wedding, I'm going to have a wedding. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, like, well, that's what I was thinking. I yeah. was going to say, like, had everything worked out and yeah. that was your wedding day, mm-hmm. would you have been happy or did you feel like you kind of got robbed 
um, of the wedding planning experience. The experience, oh, yeah. no, ma'am. I mean, you're talking about a free 99 wedding? Like, that is right up my alley. <laughs> okay. I'm like, how can I get somebody else to pay for my next wedding? Like, you know what I mean? My real wedding. Uh, no, I think, I think honestly, I'm so grateful for the way that production really took it upon themselves to, to keep this as serious as it was. And I say that, like, even if you notice the beginning of, what, the first five minutes you see the entire cast at first, and then you don't see anybody else. Like, you don't know what happened to that one couple or that one yep. person that was in the pods because the show is truly about the couples who fell in love and the couples who made it to the end. That's what Love is Blind is about. So they really do keep that um, throughout the show. Like, like literally, if you, like, Matt planning the date with, like, um, uh, in the aquarium, like, renting out the Dallas Aquarium, you know, like, that's... The, the production wanting to give us the best opportunity to truly make this work. And so I do feel like weddings, like I got to pick mariachi mm-hmm. to be, um, you know, presented at my wedding. Um, and there were other things too. I, oh my God, I'm going to say something I haven't said anywhere <gasps> else. Okay. Are y'all ready? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It's getting hot in here. Okay, it is hot in here. <laughs> no, no, no. So, okay. I really thought we were leading up to like a yes, right? I was convinced that like he had said and done everything the last two weeks of our relationship t- for me to be like oh my god it's a yes so one of my closest friends is a really good dancer like choreographing wise so she came up with a choreographed dance i bought a costume and everything i was going to dance like a bridal dance yeah. for the groom at like choreographed like uh, uh, yes. like, all of that. <laughs> like we were talking beyonce songs it was like a mashup one of the producers helped me put a song together so i really did so thinking about reception like i really wanted it to be like if we say yes, I want this to be like my wedding totally. and I'm going to do a dance for you, like yeah. in front of everybody. That's amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that costume is, is tucked away <laughs> in my little black box of like my exes. So right. anyway, <laughs> that, that was one of the questions that I want to touch on was like, was the wedding just like sort of a setup? Was it like a front, you know, we did we only, cause we only see you guys at the altar. Um, we don't really see anything before that in terms of like wedding preparation, like anything like the reception. that. The reception. Yeah. So um, it's funny because they actually because they don't know what's going to happen. Right. But they have to have food ready readily available. So uh, the couples who did get married said that there was a few hours after they said yes. There was several hours that they had to wait because the way that the catering worked is that the food had to be frozen and then like quickly oh. defrosted and then like because you don't want to make all this food for eighty plus people sure. and then people and then couples don't get married so they don't even cook the food until after they say yes and yes and then it's like go time we're having a reception so okay. yeah. so it literally is you guys walking up there the producers have no fucking idea what you guys are gonna say literally so <laughs> exactly we days before about a week before we actually came to d- downtown dallas and we got our marriage license um we both signed off on it and so the day of the wedding what happens is that if we both say yes the officiant will sign off and like we are legal married now obviously when we don't get married or when he says no and I say yes um they just tear that piece of paper up so like it doesn't mean anything but yeah so it is a legitimate wedding just like anyone else would officially get married the day of the wedding yeah. okay that's I good thought you were so nice when you pulled him aside to talk to him like in that mm-hmm. moment I like what was even going through your mind yeah you know I uh, handle conflict and like very consistently like I I handle c- conflict in a way that and I've worked really hard to get here like my 20s like no I would shut down I, I stay quiet but I just think that like I've gotten to a point in my life where I want to understand where people are coming from and I want to create this safe space of empathy compassion for others especially someone that I love you know and so I knew there was a chance he could say no. That's the, what I signed up for. And I said that. I said, no, it's fine. Like, I signed up for this. Like, I know. So I think for me, it was really just hearing, like, what happened? I feel bamboozled. Like, what actually happened? Totally. So, um, so yeah, I think it was just truly coming from a place of, of letting him explain himself and me taking it for what it is. But then also, and here's the thing, you've got to let people act accordingly. And then you decide how to move forward. And that's what I did. I was like, okay. Tell me what happened, and then I can decide right here, right now, if we're going to date later or not. Right. And for me, it was like, no, like we are not dating again. Yeah. Like, right. This is not. We never had that conversation when, when we were 
dating, like when we were engaged, I remember we were on a patio off camera and we said, I, I think I, either one of us said it, like we could actually be real friends if we weren't dating, we could actually be friends in the real world. That's all we said. We never had a conversation that, hey, if we decide to not get married, we're going to still date, right? Like there was never that understanding. I understood that once we get to the altar, if you say no, like I'm out. Mm. Like that's that's my answer. I'm yeah. not going to sit in this gray space with you after the wedding. Right. And so did you guys have a conversation after the show? Are you still in touch in any way? Did he ever apologize to you or... You know, I just, I don't even know what he was thinking. Like, totally his loss. Like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. No, honestly, it was such a blessing that he said no. I think that's something that um, he was in a place. And, it, and I think Bartise always has come, has come from a good place of not intentionally wanting to hurt people. I think that he does have a positive outlook on life and just in general. So I think for me, it wasn't so much that um, he intentionally meant to hurt me, but I think what happened after the heart break um, for me is that I did take time off to just end communication. Um, and then we decided almost like a month later, maybe three weeks later, I reached out and I said, if you're open to talk, it's been some time, like, can we talk? At this point, I had already cried all the tears that I needed to cry, had already like, you know, started the healing process of like getting over my ex. And, um, and so we met up and we talked for four hours. Wow. What was like supposed to be only drinks turned into like drinks and dinner. And then, um, I think that More was, drinks. <laughs> yeah. I, know, right? <laughs> I think that actually led up to us going out with our friends that were going out, like the castmates were going out. So we met up with them, but, um, but yeah, so that, conversation was much needed and I think for me it was that closure and I've said this so many times and my therapist knows this and we're working on it but like I have a hard time letting go of people that I truly love like when I love you it is so hard for me no matter how you betray me or how I feel you know you've done me wrong like I I really struggle with letting go and so I think um, for me, part of my healing process of getting over him was like, well, can I still have you in my life in some little way, like a friend? Mm -hmm. Can we try to be friends? And we agreed that that night um, that we would at least try to be friends and take it to a place where we still had this level of respect and we did this experience together. But at the end of the day, a year and a half later, where I'm at today is like, sir, like you don't serve me well as a friend and you've shown your true colors as a friend. So um, we've kind of kept it at that, that like we're not meant to be friends, in my opinion. Um, it's just, he's just not the friendship that I want to have. Right. I think it's admirable that you don't have a lot of like hostility towards yeah. him because you would totally be justified <laughs> if you wanted to go off, like go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I did. I mean, I have so many questions, but I did want to ask, um, especially, I mean, the whole abortion topic was really, really, um, I guess, hard for him and his family. Do you think that impacted his decision overall? Or I just don't know, like, wh like was it a piece of the decision? There were three reasons he gave me. Y'all didn't get to see this on the on the st the staircase conversation after after yes. we were after he said no. It was about a forty five minute to an hour conversation. Um, him explaining where he was at, why he said mm. no, and one of those reasons was because we have different beliefs on the right to choose. And in my mind, what you heard me respond was your your reasons for why you said no are stupid, like. You're telling me that because I choose to make the own, my own decisions for my body, like that's going to make you say no? Okay, understood. It's not my problem. It's yours. Yeah. The fact that he would use my opinion against me, I think that's where, again, like I was I was going through that process of like, oh, no, this is done. Like, yeah. sir, you have said it clear. <laughs> it is black and white. We are done. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think that conversation too, like, and in that moment, I'm telling you, like, the honesty that we had in our relationship was freaking brutal. Mm. Like, you saw it. You saw moments where he was um, unapologetically brutal. And now, as he looks back, he has, like, apologized for his delivery. He has apologized for those things. So I appreciate the, the growth, right? We're all learning. Yep. We're all trying to grow in life. And so 
I think in that moment, like when we met his family, I was so caught off guard that he brought it up in front of his mom and dad. I was like, wait, I'm sorry. We're doing, or we're doing this now. (laughs) Not that I was ashamed to say like what I believed, but I was just like, oh my God, this is like my first time meeting your family. Like what? (laughs) So Yeah. yeah, definitely felt betrayed. But I think at the end of the day too, it's like what I want people to see from that conversation, whether it was the conversation, let me just say the conversation that me and Bartiz had privately in our living room about family planning, it's okay to have differences in opinions. It's a matter of like the way we took it is that we respected each other's opinion in that moment. He said his piece, I said mine, and we literally went off about our day like, okay, like we understand we're different. I didn't know until later on the staircase that it was still a factor into why he said no. So that was a surprise to me because he had, from that moment we had that living room conversation, I told him, I said, at the end of the day, it would be up to me and my partner to make that decision for our baby. Um, And so everything is so hypothetical that I, I didn't think that a hypothetical situation would have been a reason because he didn't tell me that. Um, Again, part of the reason why I felt blindsided at the end was because it was never brought up again Mm. after that. Do you think that it was a factor or he was just kind of using it as an excuse? Uh, Bartiz is smart. He's a smart guy. He's a CPA. He's got an MBA, uh, MBA, um, I believe it is, and a master's. Um, Maybe not MBA. I think he has a master's. Anyway, uh, I say that because Bartiz, I think, needed a reason to say no. Because on paper, like, I checked all his boxes. I was the girl his grandma would have wanted. Um, You know, I reminded him of his mom. You were better than him. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, you said it. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Let me stop. Uh, So, yeah, I think think that Bartiz wanted to say no, but he didn't know why. Instead of saying, like, hey, I'm saying no because I'm not ready, that would have gave you more respect for me. That I could have been like, okay, cool. Like, okay, so where are we at now? Like, you could have worked through it. Maybe. We could we could have worked through something like if I had seen him take responsibility. But when he sat me on that staircase and he said, "There are three reasons why: one, we have differences on the right to choose. Okay, two, uh, because my ex was part of like my properties and my business, which again I hadn't heard that that was an issue yep. since the day that we nipped it in the bud. Um, so that was like a second. And then the third one was um, I actually forgot his third reason, but. But yeah. It was so dumb. You can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> they were so stupid. No, we're just kidding. But but again, I think it was it, the way I took it was he finished what he had to say, why he said no, and I said, "You're saying no because you're not ready." And mm-hmm. admit that. Don't blame it on me. And I think so many times in relationships, even friendships, right? Like we go through this process of like, well, what's wrong with me? Like, why did it? Why why are they being mean to me? What did I do? And it's like, no, actually. You are doing, you are acting accordingly. You are being confident in who you are. That's a him problem, not a me problem. And I think understanding that on that staircase allowed me to say, romantically, we are done. Like, I cannot see myself with you. I am hurt. I am broken. Like, my heart is like, Yeah. Right. (laughs) Well, you handled it really gracefully. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. You really did. You did. Um, Another question I have was about Bartiz Singh. You know, he says physical attraction is, like, apparently a big deal. And, like, do you just think he went on the show for the right reasons? Like, I don't understand why he said that. And then he went on Love is Blind. Yeah, (laughs) I I think... I think that Bartiz was, at the time, 25, um, about to be 26. I think that he was still in a space where, and I I hate feeling like I'm speaking for for him, but dating, having dated him, what I, what dated him before, I feel like he still had a malleable, he had malleable opinions, right? So he could sit there and be like, oh my God, I love you. Like you are the person that I love. But if somebody gets in his ear, like his friends or his mm-hmm. family, or they're like, well, what about this? And she's not your type. And da-da-da, you know, then that really fed into some of his opinions about me. Um, because there, and I told him plenty of times, I said, I will never be your type. I am short. 
I am brown and I'm not going to ever be a fitness model. So I mean, I think you are. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And and that's the thing is like, I never wanted him to feel or think that like I would ever be that. So I stood strong in who I was. And, and so I, I think if anything, it was getting back into the real world and seeing that the fairy tale was no longer a fairy tale, Mm -hmm. that he is still very much so swayed by people's opinions. Um, and that's something that was was really interesting for me because, again, like seeing it after, like I, one thing that I learned when I watched back the, uh, the season, I'll take you guys back to the day that we had the group outing where Andrew comes yep. back into the group uh, setting and he's like, so Nancy, how's it been? Do you miss me? You know, whatever he was asking. <laughs> and when Barchise came over and tried to like macho macho his way in, I was like, uh, y'all didn't catch this on the scene, but I was like, sir, you don't even want me. So, like, why are you over here, like, acting, you know, like, all macho and stuff? That's so annoying. But, yes, and I was just, like, looking back at it. In that moment, I, I was processing so much. I didn't see it as, like, insecurity. I, I saw it as, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, I just wasn't processing it. So when I watched it for the first time and I saw how upset he got, like, well, what are what, what were y'all talking about? And then we got to the kitchen back home mm-hmm. that night, and he's like, so, I mean, wh- what were y'all saying? Why did you get emotional? And I'm like, bro, we were talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was literally pouring my heart about, like, how I'm not your type. And so, um, so yeah, I, I just think that, um, again, the perspectives of what it's like to be on the show – and then have a year to process everything. A- and you don't know what they're going to edit. And then to relive everything. It's like I'm living in this like double world Ugh. of like, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's how it went down. Or like <laughs> processing things so much differently now because I'm going back and watching it with a different lens. Yeah. Right. You seem like you have a really warm and open personality and energy. But do you feel like everything you've gone through, being on the show – Uh, I know you get a ton of love online, but of course there's always, you know, the haters. Do you feel like it's closed you off a little bit or made you a little bit more skeptical or cautious while dating? Oh my God. Yes, absolutely. I think, um, I'm so much more vigilant, even with friends who is actually on my side and what are, what, what are these people like showing me in their actions to, to, to demonstrate that like they're not really a good friend or that they are a good friend Mm -hmm. or like people showing up that like I didn't expect to show up and they're there and I'm like oh my god like thank you you know so so yeah it definitely makes which is a good thing because I've been working on my boundaries okay (laughs) and I feel like that's been where I'm at now is like just being a more more cautious of where I'm spending and expending my energy um and making sure that like I'm not allowing my boundaries to be abused or crossed um, by friends or even like dating wise as well right that's so important I feel like Chris and I are like on the same path. Yep. We keep each other in check with. Them. We do. Yeah. We do. We do. Good. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> um. So you, Alexa, and Raven, did you guys know each other before the show? Because it seems like y'all right now are besties, and I love it. No, actually, it's so fun. Like I would honestly say, and the girls would probably say this too. If we were never have, if we would have never had gone on Love Is Blind, I don't think we would have crossed paths and actually been friends. Oh. Not in a bad way, but like even me and Raven, we've gotten so much closer, you know, since really since the show came out. Um, mm-hmm. We've just reconnected and um, she's such an amazing person that I just think that we live such different lives and we are such different people, but this is like, I don't know, trauma Bonded bonding. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and I know Alex, Alexa is so happy and like, you know, in her, in her world and I'm so happy for her. I'm like literally rooting them on um, so hard. And so I, yeah, I just, I think that it's just something that's going to be so beautiful. It's like a forever tattoo that like will never go away. Yep. Um, and this is something that like with the five girls that, you know, we're always going to have. Yeah, it would be a bonding experience, I imagine. For sure. Nobody else, like, knows about, you know, being pushed in a van and all that kind <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. A sleepless night. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Chris Sapphire from The Circle was just saying that they get together and, like, they have a little circle crew. Do you guys all get together? Do you guys party? Are there, like, reunions, like, with the cast? Oh, my God. Or? Yeah, and that's where all the drama happens. <laughs> like, it's so funny. So, okay, we got back to Dallas, right? And we're filming in Dallas. The, the r- remainder of the show, we're filming in Dallas. But all the other people who were on the original cast 
when we were filming and we we're so busy with our jobs and our lives and our relationships and trying to figure out if we're going to get married or not, that we actually didn't really see the other castmates for a long time until after we were done filming. I mean, they were having parties, they were going <laughs> out and we would see all the photos. We're like, oh my God, we're like, you know, missing out, but it's fine. Uh, Cause we're trying to like figure out if we're going to get married. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there are a lot of gatherings that at the, at least at the beginning we'd have like, um, like I had a Halloween party, me and one of the other castmates, um, we like, did a Halloween party at his place. And so, um, so yeah, I think, I think the overall camaraderie that has come from the show is such a beautiful way to like, like the women that are selected for love is blind Dallas. I mean, these women are top notch, I like it. successful women, women, not only with like really good careers, but just really great personalities. Like the women are like, Supreme. Everyone Supreme. seems so great, which is a little funny because you would think Love is Blind, they'd throw in at least one uggo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, right? I don't know. Like, like, you can't go wrong. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I just I just think that, like, the... I'm kidding. I can't speak. <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for the guys. But no, I'm just kidding. I, I think sad. everybody I think on everyone that show is hot. Actually, is pretty like attractive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm. I'm like. I think Dallas is the most attractive. Like, I agree. The cast, but I'm just like. I don't know. I don't. I don't actually remember much of like season one or maybe even season two's full cast. But um, there but yeah, is an overall. enthusiasm for season three that I just haven't seen for the other seasons. I mean, they're great. I've watched them yeah. all. But people, yeah. like, when we talk about season three, or even when we're telling people that you're coming on the pod, they're like, shut up. Like, oh people were gosh. so excited. Yeah. yeah. People were really invested in Very season three. Yeah. yeah, I will say this. And, and again, I might be biased because I was in it, right? But, like, the conversations that were had on that show, whether it was about the right to choose, abortion, um, finances, like, we took it so seriously. Mm -hmm. Not that other seasons didn't, but I wasn't afraid to be like, well, wait a minute. Like, whether cameras are rolling or not, I was going to say what was in my heart, in my mind at that moment. So I, I don't know. There's just like this, in my opinion, like there's this rawness that we went into it in our couples. Like, you see Alexa talking about sex without like any shame. And I think that's so beautiful because sex shouldn't be shameful, right? Especially when it's with a fiance or now her husband. So, so yeah, there was a lot of sex talk. There's a lot of talk <laughs> about monies and, um, you know, uh, the right to choose. And, and so, yeah, I think overall it's, it was just such an amazing raw footage of like how our lives actually are. For sure. You guys kept yeah. it real. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys, are there any like Netflix parties that you guys go to or what does Netflix do for you guys besides like the reunion and all that jazz? Yeah. You know what? I haven't been invited to a Netflix <gasps> party, but I do know that they have, they've done like other like soiree type stuff. Like, oh, we're going to invite a bunch of people. Um, but it, I mean, Netflix is based out of LA. So mm -hmm. if it is something, it's like, you know, out in LA. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would be great, but Here's the thing. Somebody asked me, like, would you date someone? And some of the cast members from, like, season two have, like, DM'd me. They're sure. like, hey, cutie. I'm like, sir, you're <laughs> like my brother. Please step aside. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I could actually date a cast member from another season of Love is Blind. It's kind of like dating your cousin. Yeah. I think. I don't know. But I like, don't know. I might speak too soon. You think so? Yeah, like, Are don't say bonding? that. What if you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if you fall in love with one of them? I know. Ooh. Be yeah. open to anything. <laughs> okay. okay. But so would you know. date someone from a different reality show? Like, like the is there anyone who's else? caught your eye? You know, I, I'm actually not super big on reality TV. Um, Everyone who's been on it seems to tell us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. It's true. Okay, maybe that's. Well, I will say, Love Is Blind did a really good job of casting people who didn't have like, oh, I want to be famous, like on their forehead type of thing, right? Gotcha. So like. All of us were just normal, regular schmegler people um, before, and um, and I think like being famous wasn't any of I think wasn't any of our castmates like agenda. So I think it helps with the true meaning of what Love Is Blind is, and like, are you here for the right reasons? Right. So yeah, whether you're there for the experience, and if you fall in love, great. If not, you know. Um, but yeah, so so I think I would be open to dating someone else from a reality TV show. Um, but yeah, we, we'd have to assess, assess that <laughs> real good. Like make sure, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Wasn't there yeah. a show that just got released today? There was, yeah. What, what's, what was it called? The re well, well, there was it's a new show up. that 
Bartis is on, right? Yes. Is so were you asked to be on that show? Um, I was not asked to be on that show. No. Uh. That would be wild. It's like to have me <laughs> and him. Well, like, I figured why would they ch- like I thought that they maybe approached you first. first and you yeah. said no, and then they settled for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that narrative. <laughs> no, I think I think um I think what's really neat about Netflix is that they really want to um, take care of their talent and want to offer opportunities for their talent. So like Chloe was on there, right? And Chloe did some promo for season two. So like, I love that they're recycling some of the talent because it allows them to truly, like if that's what they enjoy is doing reality TV and whether it's for fun or for love or, you know, a challenge or the circle, yeah. like I would love to do the circle actually. I really? That would be really cool. I don't know if I'd play myself though. <laughs> I think, no, I think I'd try to like, I think I try to be in disguise. I don't know how good I how good I would be, but you would catfish. I, I think I would catfish. You yeah. know, you have to go to Europe. That's where it's filmed. Ooh, that's where Crystal does. Okay, <laughs> well, that's no know. punishment. That's no punishment. You're fine. That's so good. Oh my god, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my plug. Netflix is listening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you said that the whole casting was very therapeutic, but once everything was said and done, and you were like back home, out of the world. What do you think was like the biggest shift in your mentality or, you know, just how were you feeling at that time? You know, wedding day for me was was the first time I felt, wow, I could actually be married and I would be so happy because it, it was a, an opportunity for me to have an event where my closest 40 people were going to be there for me. They all showed up. They were ready to be there for me. And I think that mindset after the show happened was very much so like, oh my God, like this, this is me realizing that like, I do want to be married one day. It was never a goal of mine before. It was never like, oh my God, which is great that some of my best friends and cousins and people that I know, like getting married, having kids has always been their goal, but that was never my agenda. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like career all my 20s has been my agenda. And then in my early 30s, I did Love is Blind at 31. So, like, I was in a place of, like, I get picked for the show. Cool. If I don't, cool. Like, I'm still buying properties and, like, doing my business. So, um, so yeah, I think afterwards it just made me realize that dating has to be different. If I'm actually going to walk down the aisle and let my dad go through that again, um, it needs to be real and so I didn't date for a long time and then kind of got back on the dating scene and then got back off and then in the last six months I haven't gone on many dates um except for the one that I went on last night was my first one in a while my first one in Dallas in a while okay um but yeah so actually speaking of my dad um he didn't watch the show at all no he said he got like uh, minutes into I guess uh, the first episode and I guess I had gotten emotional on one of the episodes in the beginning and he's because Bartiz had made me cry and he was like, once I saw that he made you cry, like I was out. Yeah. I, I didn't want to see what else he put you through um, because I'm not going to understand that, you know, and I didn't want to see you go through that. So yeah, my dad hasn't watched the entire show. Are you happy that he hasn't watched it? I no, I think that I, I wish he would because okay. I think like my dad's um, perspective on like how we were raised is like, and I think this is very traditional to like the Latin culture is that um, vulnerability is very special. Uh, rare in our family and so I think like talking about our feelings or talking about like we avoid and it's like oh no no it's fine it's fine like we'll get over it we'll be fine um and so even on wedding day like after uh Barty said no and I was in the room and I was like bawling my eyes out um uh, my dad comes in and he was like pretty much like you know we're gonna accept this for what it is and we're gonna move on we're gonna step forward like what happened has happened now it's time to move forward um and I'm like dad it was five minutes ago like I just got you know let, let like left at the altar like let let us just breathe and like cry a little bit but my dad is like you know don't cry like it's fine it's fine don't cry and it's like yeah but you've said that all my life and in my 30s I'm just now learning how to cry because like now it's okay for me to feel I'm still working on it but like I'm still working through those feelings of what it means to cry and I still hate it. Like, I know. <laughs> I think that's like the the thing I always say is like, I don't, I hate crying. <laughs> and then I have like these big red eyes, but like, um, but yeah, so I think, um, I would like my dad to watch it so that we could dialogue about it and maybe I can answer some of his doubts or his questions or like what it makes him feel. Um, yeah, but 
I'm not going to force him. <laughs> <laughs> but has your, so your mom has watched it and your brother, obviously? Oh, yeah. Yes. Her they, mom's like in the comments going in. Yeah. Well, no, she's. <laughs> but was this all together? Like, were, were you hearing their feedback live? No, actually. So wedding, the last episodes. So remember, I had already seen it. When we filmed Reunion, we had, the cast was sequestered yes. and like we had to see it before everyone else did. Yeah. Um, so the last, and, and it was actually the day before my birthday or right around my, my birthday's on the 8th the episodes dropped on the 9th so she was like called me like two weeks before she's like we're going to mexico i was like what <laughs> she's like i'm taking you to puerto vallarta <gasps> pick your closest friends i'm buying tickets we're going to mexico for a week amazing for your birthday and also oh. to watch love is blind like wedding episodes i was like no 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 she's like it's happening i don't care so yeah we were in mexico the whole week and one of the nights that the show had come out it was like eight of us, um, family and, and my closest girlfriends and my brother. And, um, and yeah, we watched the last, the last episodes and, you know, she was fiery and she was emotional, <laughs> but all with love. And, and I think at the end of the day, just, she is my number one. Like to me, that is unconditional love. Like mm -hmm. that's the champion that I want to be married to. Does that sound weird? <laughs> I get what you, you know mean. what I mean? Like I want that kind of unconditional love in a man. From someone in a man. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, nothing beats a mother's love, though. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. This is true. So, where are your favorite spots in Dallas? Ooh, tell us. Yes, you know I love me a good restaurant. Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's the vibe for me. Where you know it's kind of loungy. So I would say my go-to spots right now are it's Bishop Arts, mm -hmm. um, just because you have options. Whether it's catching a cocktail at like one of the cocktail bars or going to um, the cafe that also has cocktails. Um, but yeah, I love me like some uh, par Paradiso. If y'all been there and like Bishop Bar, we haven't been there. Really good food. The flatbread, like pizzas, are so good. Pita bread, oh, all the yummy stuff. Um, so so good. Pretty so. Definitely make reservations before. And it's so funny, actually. The vibe is very pod like. Like the really? furniture is like vel <laughs> velvet, like furniture. Like so, I walked in the first time and I was like, <gasps> oh my God. flashback. I'm <laughs> like remembering pod days. Um, but yes, I would say I love I love Bishop Arts. Um, second place would probably be somewhere where I could go dancing, like a, a dancing place. Gaberhood? Yeah. Have you been to the Gaberhood? Oh my God, it's been a while, but yes, I probably before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I loved having Halloween in uh. the neighborhood, like so fun when they like, it's wild down there. Um, but yes, lo love Cedar Springs, that area. Yeah. And what's your cocktail of choice? You know, I've been kind of teetering. It was an espresso martini for the longest. Oh, after so Colleen, good. after yes. I met Colleen, I was like, girl, what is this? Like, <laughs> Thank you for introducing me. Now I'm really into old fashions. Probably like oh. the last year, a good old fashioned with a cherry. That's my go-to right now. Very sophisticated. Yeah. It makes my favorite fancy <laughs> and it'll put me to sleep. So I'm like, if I have an old fashioned, because I'm trying to be chill, <laughs> you know, not too crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it. you're really big into finance and real estate. So I just wanted to ask, what would be your biggest piece of advice for other young girls uh, you know, just in general, your life advice for them. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, I do not come from a background of being a little girl or uh, uh, even in my younger 20s where I understood finances. Um, I got into a lot of debt. I bought a $30,000 car before I moved to San Francisco to go to grad school. I had $100,000 of debt when I left grad school. That's Jeez. a lot of money um, between my school loans and my car note. So... I think for me, what I would say if I would to go back, you got to understand what money is coming in and you got to understand what the money is coming out. So as simple as if I ask you right now, how much are your bills? Mm -hmm. That question is so simple. But if you really think about it and I'm talking everything, right? Your Hulu subscription, your Netflix subscription, like write down every single bill that you have. What are you actually spending? And then what money are you bringing in? Um, when you can truly understand the ins and the outs of a monthly bank account, um, you think about it like when I learned my first bank account, I remember my mom would like try to teach me how to do like the checkbook. Like if I yes. spent money that week and I, like <laughs> you write it in this, the check, the back part of your checkbook, right. but like it, but like I, I, it was never, I never understood it. I, it was not like a common <coughs> practice. So, um, so definitely understanding the ins and the outs. And then I think that truly will elevate your knowledge on, oh my gosh, like I'm only, I only have 500 bucks left at the end of the month. Like 
why am I spending a thousand dollars on food? Right. Um, then those questions start to trigger. I think when you truly understand the ins and the outs, you can see where your money is valuable and where it should go versus where it shouldn't go. And, and just keeping that budget um, tighter. And then I think from there, just if there's nothing wrong with a nine to five, there's nothing wrong with that. I loved me a nine to five. Um, right. I just was in a point in my life where I wanted more room for creativity. I wanted more room for growth. Mm. And it was me leaving my nine to five to be able to do more real estate, to be able to um, really focus on my properties and investments. But I mean, this is like a 10 year, almost 10 years that I've been doing real estate. So it didn't happen overnight. And I think that's something that people want to know, like the quick, what's the easiest way? Like, how can I get buy a house? No money down. I'm like, sir, <laughs> ma'am, get your finances in order before you start talking to me, you know? Um, <laughs> But I would say besides understanding the ins and the outs of your bank account, I loved the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That was a game changer. Great I talk book. about it all the time. It's an amazing book. If you've read it once and you still haven't done anything <coughs> since then, rate it again. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think for me, and again, I can only speak of how I've done it and what experiences I've had. When I read that book, it truly took me to a place of asking questions about where's my money going? How come I'm not, you know, saving enough? Um, and that elevated my process of investing in, in the real estate market. And then also being comfortable enough to invest in the stock market and understanding um, stocks as well and retirement funds and putting funds into there as well. So, but it all started with literally counting how much money's coming in and how much is coming out. No, I totally agree. It's a big misconception that like investing is only for the rich. You know what I mean? And anyone can invest at any amount. Yeah, very liberating. Absolutely. Do you and, um, I need to ask this because I love them as well. Yeah. Alexa and Brennan, do you guys all hang out? Because everybody's in love with them and everybody's so happy that they're married. Oh my God. <laughs> I love, if, if they needed a third, like count me <laughs> Sign in. Me you up. know what I mean? Like I love this couple. And one thing is that, um, so once we stopped filming, we all had to not only like pick ourselves up, Zenab, we she had to pick herself up. Mm-hmm. I had to pick myself up. Bartiz has to, but you know, so we all were going through the ones who didn't get married had to go through the process of like, how do we get back into the real world? And then the couples were like, oh my gosh, how do we get into the real world with our now wife and our now husband? So we all kind of went our separate ways as far as like um, not truly being super involved in each other's lives. However, this last year, um, I did play softball on Brennan's softball team. Nice. And that was so much fun. And I got a chance to just like, even if it was between innings, um, just like, hey, so how's it going? Like, what are you up to? You know, and then afterwards, we would actually go and like have burgers and $5 burgers at this place uh. um, and drinks. And Alexa would sometimes come to those games. So like we've ha- we've hung out in that manner. Uh, but yeah, they're such an amazing couple. And this woman has always to me been like the fairy godmother of like our lounge she is so wise she's so confident like I think anyone even if it's like a small piece anyone can learn from Alexa and Brennan too like he is he is just a dude like he is a man he knows what he wants and like there's something very empowering about them as a couple because she reflects that so much as well she's like I know what I want I'm confident too and so yeah they they ooze so much love and joy um at least for us as as the castmates yeah very very true I loved her wardrobe trick that she said on the reunion oh my god I cannot (laughs) believe she said that I was like girl (laughs) you gonna go to jail no just kidding (laughs) but it's true and actually um what's so cool about that concept is that um, I'm excited. I'm actually opening up a store Ooh. where it's a, it's a rent, a rent a box, rent an outfit type of thing. You That's get smart. 50 bucks a month. You get to get like four to six outfits. So you don't have to worry about the return, the tag, the 14 days, you know, you just wear it when you want, you have an event and you send it back. Um, and, and it's casual clothes, it's business clothes, it's all kinds of things, but that's the concept of like, Hey, I'm only probably going to wear this once anyway. going to exactly. take one photo. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited for that to launch, um, this spring. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Thank Do you have you. a name for it yet? Um, it's up and coming. Okay. Yes, I so will we'll drop stay it. Tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a really cool like website and everything. We're going to have a huge launch event for it and everything. So I'm excited. Yeah. Awesome. You should do a master class. You should. Don't you think? <laughs> you should. Your side hustles yeah. businesses getting into real estate. No, absolutely. I, I, here's the thing is like, I feel like I have all this knowledge and, um, I think so much of the last, what, six months has been processing 
what the heck happened, right? So, like, the reliving of that. So, like, I, I, I feel like reunion for me was so emotional. Again, I told you guys that, like, we watched all the episodes, and then they're like, okay, go to reunion. So our faces were different. Our bodies, our body language, like, I was there, like, tapping my foot. And I'm not a foot tapper, but, like, I was just so emotional. Yeah. Um, so a lot of healing had to happen, I think, for myself. And I had to be there a lot for, like, my friends, for Raven. I've had to be there, you know, as a for friend, sure. for yeah. Zenob. Like, I've, I've really... There's just a lot that I think my mental capacity has kind of maxed out. So I've, I'm working on the um, the content plan, and it's it's coming as far as, like, wanting to share. Because I, I do want people to learn from what I've done and don't make the mistakes that I've made or, um, you know, do the successful things that I've done to be able to either invest or, or maybe it's get your speech pathology license or you want to get into higher education, um, you know, by getting your master's. Like, I would love to talk about how I did it and how I had five jobs <laughs> to oh. be able to get myself through grad school and I still had like $80,000 alone. So like, you know, <laughs> um, it's expensive, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm excited to get all that in the works. It's in the, in the, it's in the works now and I'm excited to just put it out there through my YouTube channel. Um, and then I don't know about the master class. It's, it, that sounds so intimidating, but I think it <laughs> would be so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. I, I appreciate you asking that. Cause like, I think that that would definitely be, um, I actually want to take Chris Jenner's master class. Not yeah. that I want to be like a manager, That's but I'm just like, what do they do back there? You know, <laughs> I like talk to him because I have a manager and um, I'm just like, what do you do back there? How do you do these things? Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah. Thank you so much for bringing that up. As soon as you said master class, I thought of Chris. Yeah. I like right away. <laughs> right I was like, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. some of them, I won't say who's, but some of them are, they're like, listen to me and, and, and then you'll be successful. And then that's the whole thing, but uh, they never say anything. Mm. And I'm like, they're like, just, Keep keep listening. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, got you hooked, and it's like, okay, but w what's the actual plan? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Oh lord, is there anything else you're working on? Anything else you want to advertise? Like, what else are you doing? You want to give us the exclusive? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Mackenzie oh my gave us exclusive. Oh my gosh, there's so many cool things, and again, like I'm just. If I could have my heart broken a hundred times for the opportunities that have come my way, like I am so thankful and, and it's so small. It's not even about, it's not about the money, although love me some money, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, reinvesting it too, <laughs> but it really is about me being Latina, me being a brown skin woman and being on a campaign for a specific company, whether it's um, better help, uh, a counseling company, um, therapy company for online therapy, or if it's, you know, the campaigns that I've done leading up to today and like the future ones coming up. I just think like, I, I want people to know that like, yes, it's Nancy from Love is Blind, but like there's so much more to like what's to come. And I'm so thankful for these opportunities because it really does give that diversity of what it is to be a woman. And like I said, a woman of color and kind of like represent, you know, to those little girls um, or even, even people who maybe aren't Latina and yeah. <laughs> a woman, but you know, they see me and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm inspired. Like I should start investing. It's never too late to invest or right. you can't, you don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest. Um, so yeah, I think uh, my YouTube channel is going to be really exciting. Like I said, I have the content that's coming to um, related to real estate and just continued lifestyle updates, vlogging. And so my YouTube channel is Nancy Rodriguez Life. And um, what I love about YouTube is that you can literally turn on the camera and like start recording yep. whatever you have to say I'm like at a property and I'm like all right y'all we're gonna talk about how I got this property you know <laughs> so um so yeah I think for me it's just using the platform that I'm on to be able to reach as many people who want to listen I'm not gonna like force it on anyone but like if they want to listen and they want to learn um I'm excited to be able to do that um I'm trying to think of what else is coming up or what I'm allowed to say any more shows what she was allowed to uh, say yeah I know I'm like going down the She's list got some <laughs> 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 yeah um you know what I would not be opposed to being I actually really like like interviews cameras like I'm very comfortable with that um and so I'm excited to just kind of see what opportunities will come in the future and and just kind of navigate that world this whole like being on social media or being considered like a I don't even know my category social influencer or whatever. Yeah. Um, like when I get emails, or we want an influencer deal. And, and it's kind of like, I, 
it was never a goal to be an influencer, but now that I have this platform, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful yeah. um, that I can actually do something with this platform and make good of it. Yeah. Well, I think something that even maybe you underestimate for yourself is that I, I always tell people it, representation, not only is it so important, but also people that are authentically proud to be who they are. You know what I mean? So anyone can represent their culture, but to like have pride and confidence in who you are, I think adds like, you know, a notch above. And I think you do that really well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I totally agree. Should we hit Nancy with the fast five? Yeah. Are you ready? Let's do it. Manicure, pedicure. Manicure. Best vacation party spot. <sighs> Ooh. That's a toughie. Say it again. Best vacation party spot. Oh my gosh. Best vacation. You want to know what it is? Mm -hmm. South Africa. Really? Yeah. For partying? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Damn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, my definition of partying is so different now. That's fair. <laughs> like I wouldn't, That's you know, fair. but yes, totally. Like such a good vibe. The music, the food, like it, you will be out. To what like part? Cape Town? Or? I was in Cape Town. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Dog or cat? Cat. I'm allergic to dogs. <laughs> Tequila or vodka? Tequila. Comedy or horror? Ooh. Horror. That's it. Yes. I felt like yes. you were going to say yes. that. Girl, as a Scorpio, we have a dark side, okay? I know, I'm just kidding. That's where my dark side comes out is when I watch scary movies. People are like, oh my God, all this blood and gore. I'm like, yeah, give it to me. You said you don't love reality television, but yeah. what are you watching? What's Nancy watching at home right now? Yeah. Oh my gosh. When I do have time, um, love a good movie, like definitely more of a movie type girl right now. Cause uh, it, it's a commitment to watch something. So I actually watched the watcher recently. That's like a show that I've watched, but I know it's been out for a little bit. Um, the watcher was okay. Um, it was pretty good to begin with, but the last movie I watched was the JLo movie. Oh the yeah. The one that she came out with. Um, so that one, that one is good. But yeah, I would say more of like a movie person right now. <laughs> we want to thank you so much for coming on the pod. Yes. You have a lot of energy. I can't believe how nice you've been. We're like team you Nancy. Could have you could have really <laughs> gone all in, but uh, no, you've handled everything so classy and we wish you all the best. Yes. Thank y'all so much for having this platform. Honestly, I'm so excited to just continue to follow y'all and what y'all are doing. Like y'all are doing amazing things. Thank, so thank you. you so much for having me. So the winner of the $1,000 cash prize is Corinne Darcy.